you know, uh, you're a talented pianist and uh, you are able to get around uh, well considering how difficult it is. I must say that I think that there are two premises which are largely technical premises. Uh, uh, they don't work for this piece. One is you play practically all running notes legato. It's not written legato and it takes away a lot of, well, uh, of dramatic tension. very difficult, but I think it is a must. Uh, that's the first thing. And the second thing, you approach the keys from the surface of the uh, key uh, at all times. It does not ring, it does not articulate. It must be a This is, you know, I don't expect you to be able to change on the spot because it's very difficult. Uh, to change on the spot, and I tell you why. Uh, I kind of had uh, these conversations with quite a few people. Uh, you rely in your playing on feeling the keys, the feeling, the topography of the keyboard under your fingers at all time. Uh, I think Liszt said at one point that the hands of the pianist should hover over the keyboard rather than crawl along it. And this hovering requires, uh, requires certain courage. What I mean is, if you simply start play from above, it will be artificial, it will be difficult, and you'll miss a lot of notes this way. What you need to do, and this is a long-term project, and I would recommend you to embark on it, Basically, all the distances which you uh, worked out for all these jumps need to be recalibrated when the distance is measured not in straight line but in a curved line. Let me tell you what I mean. So, it's not why not? Well, because you do not get enough sound, you do not get enough articulation. Now, but it doesn't mean that you have to play every note individually. No, there is a certain relationship, but relationships like this. So, for instance, the diff distance between this 
and this, right? Uh, is not measured on the key keyboard, but measured like a curve, like a curved line, or if you want, like a bridge. So basically, just to, uh, to give you an example, can you please play something like this? Again. Forte. Very good. How about Good, good, good. You do not do what I expected you to start doing. Uh, the, the, there are two things which uh, I might expect uh, you to do. One is this. I don't remember what I told you. If not this, I expected you to do this. So you come from above, but at the very last moment, you would try to make sure that you are in, uh, on the right key. You, uh, key. you did not do it because it's very hard to, uh, to get rid of it. So it is possible. In this case, please. Uh, not, not. When we are talking about fast notes, when we talk about jumps, you understand very well what I mean. When we're talking about fast notes, they are the best played with finger staccato. What I mean is, can you play it? Now, you are doing it from the wrist. You are doing Why I don't recommend it? First of all, uh, it's, the movement is too big in the fast tempo. You simply do not have time uh, to do it. Second, the movement introduces some kind of naturalness and easygoing quality, which is not right for this, uh, for this music. What I'm doing, I try to keep my hand still. And what I'm doing, I'm kind of plucking uh, the every note. Try. If you hold your hand, hold it here. Yeah, better. Faster. So, you see, as you start playing faster, this actual, this plucking disappears, almost disappears, but it will still remain in your playing. As opposed to Uh-huh, uh-huh, good. This way of playing, this finger staccato, is very useful in quite a few uh, pieces where staccato is required, but tempo doesn't allow us 
to do it with, with the wrist. Example will be... Mm -hmm. You know what it is? Yes or not? No, not a piece, name of the piece. Brown's first concerto, last movement. You cannot play it like this, obviously. It's not this character. And you cannot, there is no time to do this. So finger staccato is the only, <coughs> the only alternative. Another thing is this. Again, you cannot play. And there is no time for. Sorry. Okay. So uh, this I would very strongly recommend you uh, to look into. With one important caveat, this way of playing is very effective and dangerous. Why dangerous? Because very easily you can be become tense here. And if you are not careful, you will have uh, pain and uh, all kind of unpleasant things. So in order to avoid it, what you need so, uh, can you put your hand here? Okay, now make this movement. You feel that the muscle works and relax. Now, do this. So, what you need to feel that the muscle does not uh, moves into the tense position and doesn't relax. But after each note, there is just a little bit of relaxation. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. Uh, if you want, you can practice like this. First slow and then, uh, and then faster. So, this is about this technical issue, I am afraid it covers quite a lot in this movement, right? But we'll talk about something else. The second, move, uh, the second theme has the same quality, maybe uh, even more so as the all this long phrase with all kind of curves. So what you need, you should not be doing this. And you should not be doing but find this, uh, the same dynamic while within it you follow the curves. Can you please play? Uh-huh, okay. Look at me, look at my fingers. You play. I play. Do you hear that the, the music speaks better this way? What do I do different?
I think what I kind of see is that your that your fingers are more. I think they 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 they, they seem to be more like controlled in general. It's kind of hard for me to explain that. Well, <clears throat> watch again. It's better if you grasp it very clearly. Difference between. Your fingers are more, they're coming from a little bit more above rather than resting. Exactly, exactly. It's coming from above. Why? Because that's how articulation is done. Listen, when I speak with you, if I speak like this, it's, you know, it's one, one phrase, unfortunately, we in COVID, post-COVID time have to forget. Watch my lips, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But now, uh, really watch my lips. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. You see, it does not it doesn't project. I may say it louder. It's a beautiful day outside. And still it doesn't project. What do we need? It's a beautiful day outside. That's all. The movement of lips is what makes articulation. What the lips and the tip of the tongue for speaker, the tips of the fingers are for the pianist. And how they move determines the articulation. Now, you say they are coming from above. I agree with you, but I do not do this. What's the difference? Instead of specifically lifting them up and down, you have them, like, like you said, hovering over. Precisely. So basically, I uh, describe it usually like this. My fingers live on a certain floor. When I need them to work minimally, they live on the ground floor. Cl the closest to the keys, the better. Right? If I need them to talk a little bit more, I move them to the second floor. So they will not be positioned like this. They will be positioned like this. Now, one of them goes to work, others stay home. The first came back, the second went to work. If uh, this is not enough articulation or not enough force, I move them uh, a floor up. So, if this is not enough, if this is not enough, understand? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and once again, I ask you uh, 
to observe the uh, dynamic indication. Look, from here, there is a long, long accelerando going on. He does not write crescendo. He does not. And so many people would do... and so on. But I think what is written and what for me is much more effective is when is written with a continuous uh, uh, crescendo. And if you think I'm too hard on you, I will uh, tell you a story. Uh, in 1927, Prokofiev came to the Soviet Union for the first time since he left in uh, 1918. Uh, he had a big tour uh, he came to Odessa and they made a kind of a special concert in his honor. And they asked the, at that time, young star David Oistrach, wonderful violinist, to play something. And he chose a movement from Prokofiev's concerto. And Oistrach described it that uh, Prokofiev was sitting in the first row and actually the, the podium was rather low. And as Oistrakh was playing, Prokofiev's face became gloomier and gloomier. And when he finished and everybody uh, applauded, Prokofiev did not applaud, but instead he made it giant step to the stage, said, young man, you are doing everything wrong. <laughs> and pushed the pianist and started right there to show him what exactly he did <laughs> wrong. I did not <laughs> do it quite that uh, blatantly. But as I said, there are certain technical premises which need to be reevaluated. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.